Hi, I'm Cami Mancher. I'm an art therapist and psychotherapist working in Amiskwachi, Wisconsin, also known as Edmonton, Alberta. This is part of the ancestral lands of many Indigenous communities and is located on Treaty 6 territory. I'm very grateful to be working here and to be recording this little chat on this land. Today we will be joined by Linda Lynn, an art therapist and clinical counselor from Vancouver, British Columbia, as well as Linnea Thorkelson, another art therapist located in Winnipeg. We are going to be discussing empathy and how empathy works in art therapy and works to help with the healing process. I'm very grateful to be able to put on this free talk for the See Me, Hear Me Expressive Art Show put on by Canopy Studios and Sparrow Art Space. The show is running the month of May, and if you can make it, I highly recommend checking it out. Now, on to our discussion. Hi, my name is Linda. I am a registered clinical counselor, a registered Canadian art therapist. I finally got the designation. Um, and a CCC, a Canadian certified counselor. Um, and I practice from Squamish, Musqueam, and Tsleil-Waututh Nations. And I'm just here called the Cypher Counseling and Therapy Studio, where I mix both of those two worlds together. Hey, hello. I am Linnea Thorkelson. Uh, I am relocated to Treaty One Territory, um, also known as Manitoba, Winnipeg, Manitoba. And I'm an art therapist here uh, with uh, Brave Canvas Art Therapy, which is a local business, and uh, also offering. Uh, groups on the side with human being expressive and yeah I'm grateful to be here today so let's get into it empathy and art and art therapy I wonder what you two think empathy even is uh, I've been kind of trying to do some research on it and there's so many different definitions throughout history um, there doesn't seem to be one defined answer even in research any thoughts um, when I think about empathy, I think about this video I watched um, when I first became a counselor. It's a video with Brene Brown's voice in the back. And she talks about empathy and the difference between that and sympathy and sometimes pity as well. Mm -hmm. um, so she mentioned how sympathy is when you're kind of like seeing the person in the well feeling really low, they're going through stuff, and you're just like up there on ground level, and you're kind of looking down and saying, ah, oh, that looks hard. You know, that's what sympathy looks like. There's some compassion. I can see that, that you're struggling, but that's the extent of it. And empathy is when you're literally going down all the way there at the end of the well, sitting next to that person, whoever it is and you're really listening to all the nuances and undercurrents and intentions and just being there whether it's actively listening or just holding space for them that's what I think empathy looks like how I would define empathy that is a very powerful image yeah I I was thinking about the etymology of empathy and I, uh, from what I understand, it comes from the, the idea of being in emotion. And it seems to me that image is really um, powerful there. You're not just looking at someone's emotion. You're actually in it. Um, and it's not your emotion. I was thinking about Carl Rogers here is really specific to define empathy as, as if you could feel what the other person is feeling, but really making sure it's the, as if, uh, portion which I, I think is interesting so being there with the other person but not getting lost in it yeah what, what are your thoughts Linnea so yeah initially when I hear the word empathy I definitely go to what it's not um so yeah people you know we've learned over the years that okay sympathy and empathy are different um and I think that the difference about empathy for me or my understanding at this point in time is yeah more of the feeling more of the emotion that you spoke about 
um, when I did a little piece of process art around empathy, for me, it was really about the heart. Um, it was really about emotion um, and the movement of uh, what people are bringing to us, what movement that creates within us, what movement it's creating in their life. Um, so empathy is, I think, maybe, yeah, touching into the motion, the emotion of what people are bringing or what people are experiencing. Um, and yeah, for me, it's empathy is connecting. Um, so the image I had was connecting of two hearts um, mm -hmm. uh, around empathy, whereas sympathy for me is a, a bit more of a separation. And I think there was also in some of my research around this, you know, the word understanding. Um, and so even though we might not have lived the, someone's experience, we can meet them in their emotions and understand um, through empathy. Um, yeah, so that's where I'm landing today. <laughs> Yeah, I really appreciate the art reflection you did on that. You know, not just this kind of mind reflection, but really trying to get into what that that feels like for you and that movement. Yeah, that really lovely. I actually thought of something, uh, how similar empathy can be with humility as well. Linnea, you talked about not totally being in their shoes, like I, I might not have ever lived through that, but um, there is going to be a level of like, I may never know what it's like, but even that can, you know, th there can be some form of connection there as well with that humility. Yeah, I thanks Linda for, for mentioning that because it, it makes me want to jump off to the point of, you know, really hearing, really listening, um, you know, really understanding as far as you can to someone's experience. It's like when people tell you their experience, you believe them, right? And you're mm -hmm. you bring you bring a curiosity to to that through that um, belief, mm -hmm. right? I think that listening piece is very important. Um, and I think in art therapy, uh, one thing I was reflecting on is it's so easy, and people who aren't trained as art therapists, I, I think, this is one of the reasons you need to be very careful if you're working with art in a therapeutic setting. Um, we have really specific training not to project and to work with our own projections when it comes to client art. Without that listening piece, it's so easy to just assume that this piece of art means this to that client or that it's conveying this emotion or that emotion. And I don't think that's, a, that's not empathizing. That's not understanding where the client's coming from. That's just projecting your own kind of feelings onto that art. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah people, another oh, go ahead Linda go ahead oh like I just was having all the flashback moment in a good way where in grad school they kept telling us like don't interpret their art like that's not what art therapy is and it shouldn't be what you know even interpreting someone's art in the art right like can be just for us and not yeah like taking over someone else's story and experience. I hope that empathy piece goes into the art world and is practiced more there too. I, I wanna share a story. Sorry, Linnea, that all you go. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a cute story. And I know both of you know Judy Weiser, who's a good friend of mine. Um, she likes to tell a story about when she had a, a, a photo exhibit. So you know, she's really big in photo therapy, but at one point, you know, she was a professional photographer and she had all her photos out at a show, but she took away the titles. So people had to go walk around and they came up and she just listened and they came up <laughs> with all these different ideas of what they were about, all these projections. Uh, I think it can be really valuable to, to look at art together in that way and discuss that. How do you feel? How do I feel? What does that mean? Um, but I think, yeah, that you got to be really careful about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is cool. <laughs> yeah, it relates to some of the imagery that I was working with when kind of playing with this topic. And 
um, you know, for example, when you go to the art gallery, you you step upon someone's art and you look at it. And for me, that is like pure impulse projection, right? You're like, oh, you, you notice what you're attracted to, what you're repulsed by, you know, you make a story in your head, right? Mm -hmm. So that's one experience. And then I think stepping into empathy is walking over to the placard, reading the intention, mm -hmm. the story and the meaning of the artist, you know, and that is like, oh, this is like, I think, you know, into some of these other questions of art and empathy and the connection. I think this is the natural way we're invited into empathy through art um, is through these, you know, representations and stories uh that get shared through art um yeah I love that I think that's uh, yeah such a it's such a powerful moment to go up to an art piece and to see what how the artist felt when they were creating it and I know often for me it's very different than how I felt and it's such a shift mm -hmm. which kind of maybe leads me to my next question for everybody which is how does empathy help with healing and also, can art promote uh, a bigger scope of empathy in people? Two questions. <laughs> yeah, for me, my, my response sort of anchors into the concept around emotion. Um, I don't know who said it, um, but, you know, I think about when we're creating art, in a way, we're allowing our hands to do the work of our hearts, right, and moving that energy and you know our our experience through our heart and emotions the stories the things that we hold um and so that's how i think art allows us to step into empathy because we're stepping into emotion we're touching into our humanness we're moving um what makes us yeah whole and real and complicated and messy <laughs> Um, and so that's why I believe art does invite us into empathy, um, just naturally. And then we can do other like more directive avenues, I feel like to tap into that more intentionally. But, um, I think that's where it starts for me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely I beautiful love... words. Oh, go ahead, Linda. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love that making art whether it's for yourself or with someone else or when you're you know in the presence of someone else making their art um it can be such catalyst for empathy and holding these memories that show up or current thoughts and expressions um like you immediately get drawn to a certain place and time or space that you never really allowed yourself to. Um, there could be creative accidents that come up during the process, which is super cool. Um, and each of those elements, whether it's the material you chose for the day or the piece of paper or the slight crumble on the side, like all of that can lead you to such cool places that you probably wouldn't have known to go to um, if you're just talking to someone um, so it's like all of these could be expressions and also representing something that's been there all along now there's there's a moment to take some attention and some time to look at right mm, yeah I really like that there's a moment I think that the brain sometimes is so quick um, to go from here to here to here. And I think if I can bring the body into this conversation, you know, we brought the heart in, but I also think the act of using your hands, bringing in this external element of color, there's a somatic element as well as, as allowing, you know, you, you to connect with this material. I think that connecting with different kinds of art mediums is a, is an empathy in its own, maybe like mm -hmm. the paint, feels what you feel you feel mm -hmm. into the paint if that makes sense uh, for anybody who's ever I think created something that really reflected their feeling especially if it's just abstract I think you know what I mean when I say like there's something about the material that encapsulates your feeling 
Mm -hmm. Also, the image that you create, whether it's abstract or a symbol or a metaphor, like there's something alive in the image that you continue to remember and envision work with even after you did the process. It's always going to be a work. A hundred percent. You know, I, I like to say the, uh, in art therapy, the internal becomes external, whether you want it to or not, which again is why we go to school for art therapy. So we know how to contain these things and, and uh, know how to work with them when they come out, because that emotion can be so powerful sometimes that even, you know, the creator can have a hard time, I think, containing it. I wonder where you two have found, um, I guess, in your own practices working with clients, have there been any particular art interventions or just moments that have uh, maybe increased empathy, but also that you found have just been a really emotionally charged and, and you really felt in the emotion through that art? Yeah, I think um, just jumping off, I think a couple of things that you all said, you know, that art is another externalizing <laughs> agent of our uh, lack of control or uncertainty, right? These things, things happen that um, just might surprise us. So I think about, you know, when, when things happen, <laughs> and how we respond as um, opportunities for empathy, right? Someone is very attached to their materials and the material breaks or they're mm. very attached to the paper and the paper rips mm. or you know like that these accidents these moments happen of futility right and then we we're you know reconciling with an experience we didn't intend to have didn't expect didn't want um and I think as humans, that's a universal of, <laughs> of humility, <laughs> humbling. Um, so, so sometimes I think it happens naturally that we're invited into this, you know, and then this is like, when else has this happened? Or have you noticed this happen with other people? And what is it like to experience in you? And how, how would that be for your friend? Or how was that for your friend or your family member? Right. And, um, helps us like invite people to to put themselves in other people's shoes um and yeah connect these universal emotions to other people in the world not just ourselves there's not really like I feel like every intervention if you want to call it that or art prompt uh, therapy prompt can lead us to places like just asking a question um and even like before you even ask a question, like usually when someone comes in, we usually do a check in anyways. But doing it through art can be such a powerful tool. Maybe they didn't know what they wanted to say at all. And suddenly there's a bunch of themes that's, that's coming up, like level of control that's going on, um, the type of yeah, again, the art materials that they're choosing to work with. There, there's always like opportunities when we're art making to give time and pause and really um, slow down and notice like what's going on here, getting curious, practicing with our imagination, a uh, tool that a lot of people say like that, that's so, um, it makes you so successful or like, imagination can take you to so many places but we often don't get to exercise that and it's super attractive as well I don't know where I'm going with this but um art making is super contagious like every time I hang out with a art therapist friend or colleague I immediately want to do more art um afterwards or after I visit a gallery, I'm like, oh my gosh, I just want to paint. I just want to do something with my hands um, or even do something creative. It doesn't have to be just painting your hand on work. It could be photographed, like you said, with Judy Weiser. It could be um, sculptures or eco art. And yeah, I so appreciate that, that contagious quality of mm -hmm. art. It's incredible. And I think, you know, 
maybe moving away from empathy, I think that art can really help us have more compassion for ourselves because you do come into contact with a part of yourself that you can't avoid, right? The, as I, in my practice, I see a lot of inner judgment. So, you know, when you create art, uh, I suck at art or I can't create anything. And, and it is heartbreaking. And it's also something that that person needs to work through. And art gives a beautiful avenue to do that because it's so vulnerable. Like I have to remind myself sometimes of, um, you know, of that, you know, art therapy schooling where we had to create art in front of everybody and how scary that was at first. Mm -hmm. Now it's not scary at all for me, but often people come in and that's just terrifying. So trying to really be in that emotion with them and say like, Hey, like it's, it's okay. But let's also look at that part of you that is really scared and the part of you that's judging yourself right now. There's just so much depth here that we can get into, even if it's just one squiggle. Oftentimes when I see folks I'm working with who really struggle, like making art around me, um, I honestly just let them do it in the week. And then if you do have images you're working with, you can just describe them with me and you can talk about that too, just to ease into like, yeah, working with images is powerful and there's something here that's moving. I hope you get to experience that. Absolutely. Um, I give art therapy homework to people that want it and never push it. Yeah. But I, on that note, something that's been really powerful me, for me and which is maybe a bit controversial in the art therapy world is I found creating art with clients to be incredibly moving. Um, you know, maybe both creating the same thing and then looking at how different it is, you know, create mm-hmm. a bridge. This person comes up with this. I come up with that. How do the images talk to each other? How are they different? Like there is something really beautiful about coming together and noticing what we each put onto the page. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you can do that in other types of therapy, maybe music therapy, more maybe creative arts therapies, but I don't know. That seems like something very special to our field. Yeah. Super collaborative and co-creating. Uh, I know I'm putting you on the spot here, but I wonder if there's an art piece that you have seen or witnessed by another artist in your life that has just completely moved you. When I think about artists, I think about my clients. Oh. I'm not going to share like what exactly they drew, but it, um, it's that experience of witnessing someone finally put, maybe it's a part of their themselves, maybe it's their child self, onto a page. And they just completely get immersed in it. And I'm immersed with them. But in, like, I obviously, are, I'm noticing their capacity, like how much can you handle here um, in one session? but really immersed in the change and recognizing and understanding what the parts of themselves are And when I see them just make one mark and, or a few marks and they're just crying, mm-hmm. they just enter that space of like, this was that all, or I finally get it, or I can finally let myself see it like that's so powerful and that moves me so much and I'm just like super honored to be witnessing and being there with them and that's something I think we can really do with talk therapy and other forms so I'm yeah just deeply honored Mm. to be able to witness that empathy as you say that, I'm imagining you in the well that you mentioned earlier, right? like really in there with them, supporting them, maybe holding that space for them as they explore that part of themselves. And I think, you know, I agree with everything you've said. And one of the other beautiful aspects of art therapy is they have a physical representation. They have an image of that moment. Mm-hmm. That's incredible. You can take a picture of it. You can frame it. You can keep it. And every time you see it, your brain is going to remember that beautiful healing moment. Yeah. 
It's a documentation. It's like a journal entry. Yeah. And you can do research with it too. You could elaborate on it, respond to it, talk to it. There's so many possibilities, endless possibilities. Yeah, that's the beautiful thing about working with these tools, right? Is like, there's just so many tools. I think that's what's different about art therapy. It's, you know, um, there's more doorways in, you know, so through our senses, it's not just what we see, but, you know, when we think about it, what do we, what do we hear? You know, what do we smell? What do we um, sense in, in our whole being? Right. So, so that's beautiful. And yeah, we can like really parse those out week after week. Right. And, and build a whole um, knowledge within, within oneself um, moving forward. Right. And um, yeah, art is, is so powerful in that way. And I will say for me and, and with my clients, I think, the process is just the power, you know, um, I'm constantly astounded by what comes forth and what is reflected upon and how people learn of themselves. Um, it's just magic. It really is like you just show up and you say yes. And, and to, to your capacity. Right. And as clinicians we're we're um, supporting, you know, right sort of drip by drip um, capacity, but um, I'm just astounded. Uh, I'll say, yeah, I say that again, like you can never, you know, you, you have a plan, but the, but, the person is the vessel so you, <laughs> um oh. yeah yeah I I really like that Linnea I think that like expanding on that you have you know of course we have plans we have ideas going into therapy sessions you know that's part of what we're taught right to make sure and we all have our own rituals to go in feeling calm and centered and all of these things but you know it's it's very death oriented actually I think this idea that you have to throw it away sometimes. The client comes, their psyche comes with their own needs and their own agenda. So no matter what the therapist wants to do, no matter what agenda we have, like the psyche has its own and, and the art doesn't lie. So mm -hmm. you can give all the interventions you want, but the art will tell you exactly where you need to go if you're willing to, I think, listen to it and respect it like a very powerful experience once you start to tap in into that kind of um, all of those symbolic representations and the communication from that inner creator maybe we can call it as you're talking about that I was thinking about how art therapy as an approach can be literally worked with in any sort of approach not just in the creative approaches with therapies um, somatic experiencing it, I even tried it with EMDR before and it worked it's it's amazing because it's like Linnea said it's like it's got so many doorways you can enter at any time uh, anywhere and yeah each time it's just it mind blows right it's it's super cool that yeah there's like so many possibilities here and I think that's a really great segue into something I've been thinking a lot about, which is um, gatekeeping art therapy and also the importance of art therapy education. So mm -hmm. bringing art into the psychotherapy room with someone who's not trained in art therapy. This is mm -hmm. something I really, you know, I'm thinking a lot about. Art is so incredibly helpful. And I think the inner creator is very wise. But there's a reason we've had our training and we've spent our hours, many hours to get these registrations and many hours doing our own art. I'm curious where you two stand on that and what, what you think about, about bringing art into therapeutic settings without that, that container maybe, or what that means or the dangers of that. I think it can be practiced as, um, or as therapy, um, instead of calling it art therapy. Uh, 
I always say like, you're welcome to practice art as therapy on your own even, and even with other practitioners, but um, art therapy is a little bit, you know, it can go deep. It can go really fast too. Um, it is a catalyst, right? So um, we do want to be mindful of that kind of relationship and the level of rapport we can build if we're using art therapy without totally understanding how fast it can lead us to places. And if there's enough of this container that you're building with this client, um, I think that would be really important to examine and collaborate on or else there might be an issue. Yeah, I really appreciate that. I think in our, you know, in our art therapy education, not just in school, but in the many supervision hours we had to get after to get those registrations, um, the things I feel like I, I really learned were about how it's not just uh, here's some paint and here's some paper. It's all these tiny little decisions. My mm -hmm. office is a mm -hmm. part of the art therapy even virtually there's a yeah. all of this has yeah. a reason and was thought about very specifically yeah. um so there is a container within that space why I chose those pencil crayons to put out there's a container there how I direct a client you know when they do have maybe they've drawn something that's really scary you know I I feel like I know uh, I can offer not solutions, I can offer avenues, different pathways and where to go with that uh, without bringing myself into it because I've been there. Because I think one of the caveats of art therapy is you never do something with a client you haven't done yourself with yourself. Hence why, you know, we have all of this breadth of knowledge and experience. It is so, it, I think people really underestimate the danger, you know, that can happen if you don't know how to contain something you don't know why maybe you, you can't speculate why a client chose a pencil over a marker. Again, this is not saying I know exactly why a client did that, but I can speculate and we can talk about it. Whereas I think, you know, if, if you're, if you don't have that training, you might just have all these materials out there and have no idea why. Yeah. I think you bring, you know, the nuance of it, the layer, the layering of it, the intentionality of it um to the fore right that um for for it to be the therapy that it has the potential to be to uh in terms of reaching a depth um this intentionality has to has to be present um yeah it's it's a bit of a you know it's very gray area there's a lot of people doing art as therapy work uh, non-clinical therapeutic art experiences right um but i think the difference between a trained art therapist and and those facilitators is understanding these nuances right that have the eyes to see perhaps you know a bit of a dissociation or you know like needing um some titration right um and yeah I think um people obviously people's intentions are um in the right place uh but without the knowledge right once we have the knowledge we can do better and and that's part of us our role as professionals is to educate to um find the language to um communicate the nuance right like oh that must be fun you know people you know oh you doing your therapy oh that must be fun right it, yes it, it is fun like this is an entryway in it is fun and joy and pleasure um but it's also a container for exploring things that yeah are not those things um so to have the skills to support yeah hold for your clients, I, I think, yeah, is obviously invaluable. And yeah, it's process oriented too, right? We learn, we learn our edges by sometimes moving beyond them. Um, and yeah, as therapists, we're, we're trained to, to 
try and track those a bit better. Yeah, I like that moving beyond those edges. Uh, you know, something I, I feel like Jung said at one point was we need to know our limits, uh, but we can't know our limits until we've moved past them, which is where I think a trained art therapist, if you're working with art in that way, can really help. You know, you've moved past your limits and suddenly you're like, what do I do? I'm past my limits. There's a, an ability to ground here. And, and I think any good psychotherapist or counselor can help you with that. But sometimes the art, I think, amplifies it all to the point where it can feel really chaotic and scary. And if a scary image comes out and you think, what? Like, I have the capacity to create this. And maybe the therapist even feels that. Back to empathy here. They have the capacity to create this. What do I do with it? They don't have that symbolic knowledge, maybe, too. Mm -hmm. That being said, I, I wish there was more uh, education about art therapy and ability for psychotherapists, somatic therapists, et cetera, to get training. It's so expensive to get your training, and you need, you need, you need a lot of um, art background to do it. I think that would be a really beautiful thing to see uh, you know, a little bit easier access to that for their therapist. As you're talking here, both of you, um, it really reminds me of, you know, the term trauma informed. Mm -hmm. Like, I wish we were more art therapy informed or image informed. And mm -hmm. yeah, really, maybe even like, yeah, incorporating some of that, those images and the power of images into psychotherapy training um, I think that would be really helpful and it could help with um, just that problem you were talking about how people don't know how to build a container with these images yet and maybe they're practicing already and that can be dangerous right um, so yeah I, I wish there was more of that informed piece get a lot these days um there's so much focus on solution solution there's so much solution focus on solution focused therapy and and mm -hmm. i think you know cbt dbt all of these things are so valuable in their own ways but i don't think they bring that image or that metaphor that symbol uh, into people's lives as much as they could imagine cbt you know these different cognitive distortions, looking at them, imagine bringing images to that, how powerful that could be. Um, I, I think that would just be an interesting thing to see. You know, I was very adamantly against CBT in my early years, but it is so helpful for so many people in ego formation and, and grounding. But to bring some depth to it in that way, like, yeah, I would love to see something like that. Yeah, it's I funny mean, too. Oh, go ahead, you'll, go, you'll go ahead. <laughs> I was just gonna say uh you know it's funny I, when you're saturated in the art therapy world and you have colleagues who are art therapists and you're like it's such a part of your worldview right it's through the lens at which you approach the world right so this nuance you know um these details are I think part a lot of how we just move through the world it's sometimes a little bit shocking that other people <laughs> aren't aren't sort of thinking about this or thinking about that right um but they're just like you know throwing things to the wind it's like oh yeah people and perhaps this is where empathy comes in right like you know we only know as much as we know and everyone has their own uh their leanings right um but yeah, it still surprises me so much when people are like, what's our therapy, you know, or like, oh, you can do this or you can do that. And um, yeah, I think earlier, uh, Linda, you said something about possibility. And for me, that's really the practice, right, is, is uh, finding possibility, locating possibility and um, yeah, befriending the creative to do that. <laughs> Oh, honestly, like uh, what I was about to say earlier was uh, how, yeah, CBT, DBT, all these top therapies are more of that top down approach. You go from the brain, intellectualize a little bit more. And healing itself can also and can be very powerful from the bottom up. Um, 
I always lean into approaches that are more bottom up, like somatic work and arts, creative stuff. EMDR, you can, like every trauma informed work is a lot of that is bottom up approaches. And I think art therapy is definitely a bottom up approach or um, you're not just leaning into this one kind of tunnel vision story, like this is who I am. And there's so many possibilities here. Like, and you work with those senses, like Linnea said before, there's so much more that you can bring into that relationship with yourself and the story and your experience. As you say that, Linda, I'm thinking about a conversation I had with one of the um, founders, Kim, who's putting uh, the, she has Canopy Studios and is putting on this show, um, the See Me, Hear Me Expressive Arts show that we're doing this talk for. And we were discussing, you know, yeah, the difference between art therapy and, and working with art with individuals to facilitate healing and um, how that works. And I thought, you know, it, it is with that kind of bottom up approach. I think maybe this is where these facilitators fit in people who are facilitating art as therapy we're not art therapists, perhaps this is really starting out that felt sense of joy and playfulness and fun that comes mm -hmm. from creating art, especially in a group. Usually these are group activities. Um, and maybe this is the gateway into something deeper, but it doesn't go deeper because it's not art therapy. Mm -hmm. It creates playfulness, joy, creativity, connection. And that is a really vital part. And I think as we're reflecting just now, I'm, I'm feeling really grateful for everybody who does just offer art classes, creative classes, places to play, because that makes our job so much easier, actually, when somebody is already connected to their inner creator. I have to run, though. The, oh. the eyes are lettering open. Um, but so nice to speak with you both. And yeah, nice to see you. I get a little piece of BC from you, Linda, and a little piece of <laughs> Alberta from you, Cami, and I take it with me. Uh, into the day. <laughs> Thank you so much, Linnea. Yeah, thanks. Take Bye. care. Bye now. Bye. Well, on that note, maybe we should wrap things up on our end too. Do you have yeah. any final thoughts or things that you'd like to, I don't know, leave whatever listeners we might have with before we end? Yeah. I mean, I was thinking how art therapy, even this talk, is really fueling me. Um, Sometimes, like after you do this work for so long, especially when you're always doing talk therapy, I notice that that drains my energy. Like when I'm constantly thinking about theories or like approaches, like it's just not my style, I guess. Yeah. And the stuff, like art talk and art therapy talk just invigorates my energy. It fuels it up. It feels... Like it's 8 a.m. right now still, and I'm feeling so awake after the talk. So there's something here. Um, yeah, something so contagious. Oh, I love that. I Me too. I'm feeling energized. Like there's yeah. a, a fire <laughs> and, and it's wonderful. Yeah. So thank yeah. you so much for joining us, Linda. And who knows, maybe we'll have more discussions like this in the future. <laughs> this is fun. This could totally be a podcast too, just say. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate we'll that. Well, yeah, let's uh, let's see where that goes. And maybe I'll call you on for as, as a guest speaker one of these days. Cool. Awesome. All right. Well, I will let you go. Have a great rest of your day. And yes. I'll talk with you soon. Thank you so much for doing this. Of course. Thank you so much for hosting and inviting me into this. So lovely to this morning. Thank you again for joining us as we talked about art therapy and empathy and all sorts of different things. I hope you enjoy the rest of the See Me, Hear Me art show. Um, if you haven't had a chance, go check it out. It's going the whole month of May, I think. And again, really grateful to be able to contribute something to it. Have a lovely rest of your day. Bye now.